Well, it's a real pleasure to be with uh, you today here uh, in Seoul. I will uh, walk you through a uh, comparison of uh, the French hydrogen economy, current development, and strategic orientations in comparison uh, with uh, other countries. So first, uh, let's look together uh, the question of production, primary energy sources, pricing, market structure, and legislation. Whenever you start having a hydrogen economy, the question that comes up is, am I going to produce everything myself, or I am, am I going to import? And if I have excess hydrogen on my hands, may I send it abroad. So here in Korea, uh, you will import quite a bit of hydrogen, like you import other energy vectors, and you will have uh, a little bit part of the production that will be local. As you see in Europe, uh, we have countries like Germany that have very clearly stated that they will have very large imports as well less than in Korea, and that have already started having an international import activity and import strategy. ISS is going to be like 60% local production, 40% import, but we will see how the market goes. Spain, which is with abundant wind and solar in the south of Europe, will produce for itself and then will sell to the rest of Europe the additional capacities that they won't use. So it's going to be, for me, kind of 50-50. In France, right now, the orientation is that we will produce locally and develop local ecosystem, like Bruno showed in the just previous presentation. And if there's a little bit of excess, we'll probably uh, shift it across the border, for instance, towards Benelux or towards Germany, and there might be a little bit of import for our economy. I'm not talking here about transiting flow between Spain and France. So keep in mind, France right now, local production for local use. The next question then is, how do you produce your hygiene? Here in Korea, it's going to be based on nuclear, it's going to be based on renewable, a lot of wind. In Europe, certain countries are not at all into nuclear. And if you take Germany and Spain, it's a lot of wind and it's then solar. And of course, those who are in the south are blessed with sunlight. So it's going to be much more in Spain than it's going to be in Germany. In France, we're going to have everything. And like in Korea, we have a very strong policy around hydrogen produced from nuclear power. Next to that, we're going to have onshore wind and offshore wind and solar farms. Regarding the commercial approach, the market structuring, here in Korea, it is Right now, a lot of gas imports then transformed into gray hydrogen. And so the driving element of the final hydrogen price is the initial natural gas price. In France and in Spain, that have first and foremost right now local ecosystem development, the driver will be the price of electricity from the electricity mix. In Germany, the situation is not similar as, sorry, Germany has already integrated now that there will be a global market with global imports from the entire Europe and the world at large. So they have already, a couple of months ago, established the basis of a very open 
bidding platform with people providing hydrogen and people buying hydrogen. So here, there's another difference. How will the French hydrogen economy evolve in these environments like the other economies? There are two major factors. The first underlying factor or question is how fast are we going to have hydrogen pipelines running through Europe? We have transport operators in all countries and about 40 of them to get now are sitting together on a regular basis and laying out the development of the hydrogen pipelines across Europe. And this is a picture of the latest reports that has been updated earlier this year. And as you see, we're going to have tens of thousands of hydrogen pipeline running through Europe in the years to come. And it's going to happen fast. And what you see here on this map is the yellow lines are new dedicated hydrogen pipelines, whereas the gray line are former gas pipelines transformed into hydrogen pipelines. And you see how this is spanning. You see how France is at a core roundabout location. And so the question for us in terms of market development is when and how fast is this market going to evolve? Because that means the French market is going to move from a local market to a global market. The other underlying question is, you know, what about Europe legislation? And so here there are two questions at stake. The first one is what about the renewable law? It is being revised right now to include new objectives regarding green hydrogen. And there, there is a fundamental, fundamental new principle that will most likely be introduced which is the principle of additionality. What is it? If you have green power today, the idea is that this green power goes first and foremost towards power uses, not to the production of hydrogen. And so it will be asked that hydrogen producers develop new additional green power capacities in order to produce green hydrogen. And there is an array of rules around it that I will not detail, but the general consensus in the hydrogen ecosystem, and I used to be the chairman of Hydrogen Europe, so I followed this across the years, the past years, is that it will put a straight jacket on the development of green hydrogen in Europe if things stay as it's currently drafted. The other big question is the question of taxonomy. And in other words, what can we say about hydrogen produced from nuclear power? In the European current taxonomy, we look at the level of emissions related to a given energy. And as a summary, right now, hydrogen produced from nuclear power is below the threshold considered as low carbon, and so is in the, so to say, green zone Hydrogen produced from nuclear power is considered as a low carbon fuel as per the European taxonomy. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be green as per the renewable energy directive or the general orientations of greening and decarbonizing the European economy. So we have here a legal regulatory risk that is not fully clarified, 
and that we need to further look at. And it will have, of course, a major impact for the hygiene economy in France, because behind this is a question, will the hygiene produced in France from nuclear reactors be a green hygiene that can be sold all throughout Europe? Now let's move to the technology focus. You have seen what Bruno has showed you in terms of how vibrant uh, and dynamic the French hygiene technology ecosystem is. And he has told you about the important project of common European interest. I remind you, these are projects on which the European Commission puts a stamp so that you can go up to 70% public funding because they are considered as not harming the competition in Europe. And then it is up to the member states first to put forward projects for stamping and second to fund them. So you can put for projects forward in the field of industries, new products or ecosystems or infrastructure, and you, we just had the first batch of projects in the industry validated a couple of weeks ago, and here are the results, and you see that France got 10 projects approved, while Germany four, the Netherlands one, and Spain four, and that's a clear signal to you, similar to what is happening here in Korea, that in France and in Korea, there is a very, very strong focus from the government towards supporting the hygiene industry, the provider of industrial solutions. Of course, there are interests across all countries regarding ecosystem, but then what differs in France is that the government, for the time being, has no intention to support with public funding the development of hygiene pipelines. And that is very different in the Netherlands and in Germany, for instance, who have very strong import policies and then want to shift hygiene across their country via those pipelines. So the, here you have another major difference. I want also to tell you about the dynamism of the stock markets. Uh, we have had, over the past two years, a lot of very successful introductions of hygiene startups with very good valuation in hundreds of millions that you see on the upper right part. I run you through uh, the five of them. First, HDF, Hydrogen of France. This is a company doing, taking green power, electrolyzing it's to produce green hydrogen and then putting it back on the grid via hydrogen fuel cell. I tell you then about Afner Energy, which takes biomass and then transforms it into green hydrogen and biochar. So the carbon in the biomass gets into the ground and is being captured. About Opium, which is a company doing, developing a new hydrogen-based car. And then finally about HRS, which is a company doing hydrogen refueling station. As hydrogen advisors, I was involved in the early stage of the INOCA project, which is the flagship project of AFNA Energy. Then the fifth one is LIFE, which is a company doing electrolyzers and very complex uh, digital system to optimize hydrogen production offshore from offshore wind farm and then sending it towards the land. And they have a booth here in Seoul. And I was also involved in the early stage of uh, the company. In terms of areas of focus of the current hydrogen economy and beyond the detail elements that Bruno showed you on buses, trucks, and cars and local ecosystem. I want to give you a high level picture uh, before I leave the stage, which is that with the hygiene economy, you can serve the industry, you can serve the transport sector, 
or you can provide heat. And you see here very clearly that there is difference between France and other countries like here Korea where you have some projects related to using hydrogen fuel cell for buildings heating which is something that we find also in Europe, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in the UK, but which is not present uh, in France. One of the reasons being that uh, we use a lot of uh, nuclear power to heat our buildings and homes. I thank you for your interest, and I wish you a very successful age to meet. And I will now hand the floor to Pascal Demougeau from uh, SNESI. Thank you.